So uh, good morning. Um, we're here this morning with uh, my husband, Dr. Joe Pizzarno, um, and we're going to talk about detoxification, uh, how to detoxify your home, your food and meals, um, and your body, your personal care routine. We'll share four simple things you can do for each of these things, detox your home, your food, and your body. Um, and we'll start out with how to detox your home, okay, how to reduce toxin exposure in your home environment. So the first thing uh, we'd like to tell you to do is to not wear shoes in your home. And Joe will tell you why that's important. So the challenge here is that there are a lot of toxins in the environment, uh, particularly if people living near a farming area, for example, or they live near a highway, or if there's a garden nearby where people are using uh, pesticides and herbicides and things of this nature. So a number of studies have actually looked at the level of toxins in the air in a home and compared it to people when they're taking their shoes off before coming into the house versus those left their shoes on in the house. And it turns out those who leave their shoes on when they come into the house track all these toxins from the outside air. So it can be pesticides, it can be herbicides, it can be what are called uh, PHs, polyaromatic hydrocarbons that are bound to what's called particulate matter. So a really simple way to decrease toxins is simply don't wear your shoes in the house. Wear some slippers. Now you could leave a, a shoe rack in your garage. That's what we do. We have a, a shoe rack in our garage. We take our shoes off, pick them in the house. Um, and for guests, I have a big basket of clean socks and slippers that I put by the front door. And people just leave their shoes by the front door. When they come in. Um, the next thing we'd like to recommend is that you do not use pesticides in your home or garden. And we know it's spring and that there are, you know, and uh, the onset of bugs is arriving, but um, hopefully Joe can give you his tips on what to do instead to safely eliminate pests in your house. Unfortunately, people pretty freely utilize a number of pretty toxic compounds when having to worry about insects, ants, etc. Uh, typically people are using what are called organophosphate pesticides. Now these organophosphate pesticides are indeed effective at killing insects. The problem is the neurological toxins. And while the people say, well, you know, you don't get high enough dosage to cause trouble, so don't worry about it. When you look at the research, it's worrisome. For example, some research looked at, and not some, there's three studies uh, that I'm aware of, they looked at the levels of organophosphate pesticides in pregnant women, and then they compared women in the highest toxicity levels to those the lowest toxicity level, and they looked at the IQ of their children. So they did a the, all the statistical analysis to you know differentiate socioeconomic status and uh, ethnic background, things of this nature. And what they found was that children born to women in the top 10% of body load of organophosphate pesticides had a seven point lower IQ. They tracked these children over seven years and they never got the IQ back. So when you think about these toxins, it's not just for yourself, but it's for your children as well. So could you tell them about um, what we now do when we have the typical spring ant attack? So we use something called bor boric acid. And boric acid is beneficial in that it's not particularly toxic for humans but it's very toxic to things like ants. So if you put these little uh, containers of boric acid in the areas where the ants are coming in, they'll take the boric acid back to their colony and it'll kill the queens. Now, I, you know, I, I'm being vegetarian, I don't tend to like to kill uh, living things, but the living things need to live outside the house, not inside our house. Yeah, when, when they start eating the cat food that we leave on the floor in the pantry, it's, it's time for the boric acid. So uh, the next thing that you can do is you can filter your air and your water. And um, Joe will explain why it's important to filter your air. When we're looking at toxins, you might say there's active ways we get toxins and passive ways we get toxins. So active way of getting toxins is, well, look at our food. Are you actively choosing to buy organically grown foods or are you buying uh, conventionally grown foods, which are grown with a lot of toxic chemicals? 
So that's kind of an active choice. But there's passive choices that are really important because we can clamp our environment without having to actually do anything every day. And a great way of doing that is by clearing up the air and the water. It turns out most people now live in cities, and cities have in the air things like particulate matter, which has what are called PAHs or polycyclic uh, aromatic amines. That's long term. But what's significant about this is that it causes cardiovascular disease. So the closer a person lives to a highway, uh, the more cardiovascular disease they have because of these toxins in the air. So the good news is that to put an air filter in the house. Now, it's got to be a good air filter. Uh, and the best way we suggest doing that is in when you have a whole house air conditioning system or air heating system, uh, put what's called a MERV 12 or higher filter into the air conditioning system and run it all the time. So what this does, it cleans out the air. So we did this to our house, oh, three or four years ago. And we noticed dramatic improvement in our house, and that is there was way less dust. And you may re recall over several years now, we've had forest fires, and it's remarkable. When our doors are closed, we don't smell the smoke. Open the door, walk outside, you smell the smoke. So these things are very, very effective at decreasing this passive experience of toxins in the air. Same thing with the water. Uh, our water, in general, can be pretty clean, but there are some toxins in water, and it varies widely according to where people are living. So we use a whole, um, uh, we, we, we use this, a carbon block filter, and we connect it to the water supply coming into the house. So all the water in the house is being cleaned up. Some people put these filters on their kitchen sinks. Well, that's a good idea. But it turns out most of our exposure is actually from the showers. Because when we have the hot water coming out of the shower, now it's kind of evaporating that, that um, those uh, toxic those toxins. We then breathe them into our lungs. And when you breathe them into your lungs, it's a very efficient way of getting these toxins into the body. So clean up the water supply as well. So and I'd like to add to that. Um, don't add toxins to your indoor air. Uh, one big source of those are paraffin wax candles um, and, and scent, the scented candles. Unless the scent is from an organic essential oil, you're putting phthalates into the air. Um, paraffin candles can release really nasty toxins like toluene and benzene. So try to get these wax candles. And for heaven's sakes, don't use air fresheners. Okay? What you're doing is dousing yourself with phthalate. Um, the perfumes, scented body lotions, shampoos, et cetera, that have the nice smell, um, you're polluting yourself. And there are plenty of good products available that don't contain these nasty compounds. So, um, and also on water, if you do decide to use a whole house filter, you'll need to add chlorine tablets to the toilet tank. Um, and if you have tropical fish, you'll need to add some uh, minerals to the water when you change the water in the tank or your fish will die because the whole house filters will remove everything from the water. In terms of yourself, you should be eating plenty of mineral-rich plant food to get your own minerals. And of course, you're taking AlgaCal Plus, so you'll be covered. But you're, you're, I don't think they have AlgaCal Plus for fish yet. Okay, So you, you're going to have to mineralize them. Um, so the next thing that we wanted to talk about is cleaning supplies. And we urge you to make your own. It's so much less expensive um, and it's very effective. And Joe will explain why it's worth doing this. The challenge with these cleaning supplies is they often contain toxic chemicals. And they're uh, several different types, but most of them are what are called uh, volatile organic compounds. So that means when you're using the chemicals, the, these household cleaning products, you smell them. Now, whenever you're smelling something, it's going into your body. So they can be have things that are like fragrances, which don't sound too bad, but the fragrances typically have phthalates. They're necessary to make these fragrances uh, soluble and stable. And those phthalates cause all kinds of trouble. So for example, you look at people having blood sugar control problems. You know, we call it insulin resistance that eventually becomes diabetes. Well, these phthalates bind to the insulin receptor sites on the cells, which makes the cells less responsive to insulin and therefore, it makes people more susceptible to eventually be getting diabetes. So it's the, the cephalates, uh, it's the uh, volatile organic compounds. They're all toxic, uh, toxic to us. So anything we can do to decrease toxicity is important to do. 
They may be saying, well, I only clean the house once a week and I don't smell those toxins very often. Okay, fine. But the problem is we have so many sources of toxins. Wherever we can have control, we need to exercise that to decrease our toxic exposure. Yeah, so what um, what I do for cleaning supplies is I have a great big jug of distilled white vinegar, and then I, I have organic essential oils. My favorites are lavender, rose, rosemary, and thyme, and I do a combination of them. Um, I add, I fill up a great big spray bottle with water, three quarters full of water, then I put the last quarter of it is distilled white vinegar. And then I add whatever essential oils um, I want to get the scent that I want, something that'll be pleasant in the house. And um, and that's what I use to clean everything. Uh, for furniture polish, you can use two parts of coconut oil and one part each lemon juice and vinegar again. And it makes a wonderful furniture polish that will completely restore your, your wooden furniture and keep it for you um, without putting toxins in the air. The other things uh, that I think are really important to do is if you use sponges in your kitchen, sponges are really porous and they're damp, and so they easily accumulate bacteria like salmonella and listeria. So it's a really good idea to very frequently put your sponges in your microwave, run the microwave for two minutes to kill anything in them, and then rinse them out again and squeeze them you know, as dry as you can before you put them away and you want to use them again. And then try to replace them every two to three weeks. Um, the, the bone health connection here is that all these environmental toxins cause chronic osteoclast activating inflammation and they poison the enzymes that your bones have to use to produce new bone and they damage organs that are essential for bone renewal, your liver, your kidneys, and your cardiovascular system. So the next um, video that we're going to do, we're going to talk about detoxifying your food and your meals.